Good morning and welcome to National Graduate Week, uh, brought to you by Career Map Media Group. Um, my name is Heather Beatty, um, I'm from Career Map, and this morning uh, I'm joined by the team at TALES, who will be talking to you all about their graduate opportunities, um, onboarding, and also speaking to um, a, a, a recruit who's on programme who can tell you all about their own experiences as well. Um, just a little bit of housekeeping before I hand over to the team. Um, you may already have seen it. There is a chat box on the right hand side of your screen. Feel free to pop any questions into there. We can pose them to the panel at, towards the end of the session in the Q&A. Uh, and don't worry about missing out on anything. This session is being recorded and it will be emailed to, to you as well. So it will be dropped in your inbox within the next few days. So you'll have everything as a point of reference. Uh, from me, for now, it's time to hand over to the team and I will see you for the Q&A. Just need your uh, audio on, Georgia. Thanks. Morning, everybody. Welcome to the Q&A and thanks for joining us this morning. Um, my name is Georgia Mullins and I'm Head of Early Careers for TALIS UK. Um, as Heather kindly said, I'll be taking you through um, some information this morning about our business, what it's like to work at TALIS, um, some details on our recruitment process, and then you'll hear from a couple of our graduates about their experiences with the business. Uh, before we get started and I share some slides with you, Heather, would you mind play, playing our video just to give people a bit of an insight into uh, life at Talis? Yep, yeah, sure. Start it now. At Talis, we've taken on the challenge of building a future we can all trust. And to get there, we rely on the power of human intelligence. As responsible future makers, we work together to invent a safer, greener, and more inclusive world. Our people's human intelligence helps planes to take the greenest routes and spur space missions. It protects people's physical and digital safety, upholds privacy laws and nation sovereignty. Human intelligence flourishes when the conditions are created for people to succeed. We empower our people to balance their office and home lives, to explore smarter and flexible ways to work, and to embrace a world of different perspectives and identities. Human intelligence evolves thanks to limitless opportunities to learn from each other, connecting you with a global community of passionate experts to explore a career that can take you to new ground from the bottom of the ocean to the depth of space and cyberspace so you can work with the world wherever you are are you ready to build a future we can all trust then join us and bring your human intelligence say hi to talis Thanks, Heather. I'm not sure if the video cut out for others. It cut out for me slightly, but it's OK. I'll fill in the blanks for you. Um, so as I said, thanks very much for joining us today, everyone. I'm going to take you through the slides now. Uh, Heather, I just want to do a quick mic check to see you can still hear me. Yeah, absolutely. You'd be perfect. Fantastic. So you've got a snippet into our business there, but I can tell you a bit more about it. Um, as you would have seen from some of that video, we're a very diverse business at Talis. We um, work in over 70 countries and we have about 80,000 people across the globe. And we work across a lot of different sectors. So we have um, an aerospace business. We work in the defense and protect sector. We work in digital identity and security. Um, and most of what we do touches the lives of people daily without them knowing it. So if you check your bank card after this, on the back, there'll likely be um, Talis's name, as we usually encrypt bank cards across the globe. We protect 19 of the world's 20 banks. Um, so we work in lots of different sectors. In the aviation space, as you would have seen, we um, create uh, satellite navigation technology and systems, in-flight entertainment systems. So when you're up high in the sky watching movies, that is Talis Tech. 
Um, and we also work across the secure communication space, um, defence sector, as I mentioned, and lots of other areas. A bit more information about the UK business. We have six key sites around the UK, um, the main ones being Cheadle, Temple Coombe, Glasgow, Belfast, Reading. Um, but we also have some smaller sites and pockets across customer areas um, in the business. We work with the MOD and the RAF and our various other customers. Um, we work for some large commercial businesses as well, where we protect their um, operational technology equipment, so in factories to ensure people don't hack into uh, ice cream machines, um, work with lots of different diverse customers. So our main areas, as you would have seen, um, are aerospace, space, defence and digital and security. And we've got about seven and a half thousand people in the UK. And we're continuing to grow. A bit more information about the aerospace business. So we keep everyone safe and entertained in the skies. Um, as I mentioned, air traffic management. We provide training and simulation solutions to pilot for pilots to get them air ready. Uh, no tail aircraft connectivity and in-flight entertainment services. Um, we also connect parts of the aerospace system in the air, the ground and in between. Um, and we're also the number one worldwide provider for air traffic management. Our space sector, the uh, space business, the one that everyone gets very excited about. Um, so for more than 40 years, Talisalinia Space has designed, integrated, tested and operated innovative space systems. Um, we are there 7,700 7, employees and we're present in over 10 countries and growing. Um, our main site at the moment is in Oxford and we will be moving soon across to a site in Reading. We're number one in the world leader in operational space oceanography with radar altimeters. We've supplied 50% of the pressurized volume of the International Space Station and we are the prime contractor for the ExoMars mission. So a very exciting business and something we're very proud to work within the space sector. Defence, obviously a major part of our business. Uh, we are increasingly in this increasingly unpredictable world. Governments really rely on us across the board with our expertise to protect their citizens. And we design an array of different technology in this space from smart sensors, um, digital battlefield technology, uh, states and to protect state cities and infrastructure. So again, we're the number one worldwide in advanced air defence. Our Watchkeeper technology is the UK's first operationally proven unmanned aircraft system. And the Syracuse 3 is constantly evolving and ties together critical communications from end to end across the defence sector. Digital identity and security is an area that we are increasingly investing in. Um, a couple of years ago, we went through a major acquisition with a company named Gemalto, who are a huge digital security business. And the company responsible for the biometric encryption technology on your passport. So when you're going through the airport, scanning your passport, we make that technology. And Gemalto is the spearhead in that arena. Uh, within this space, we also keep secrets safe. So our businesses and governments rely on us heavily to build trust to billions of digital interactions they have with people. Um, identity management, so facial recognition and data protection technology help banks to exchange funds. We uh, protect cross people across borders, the energy sector, um, and we do this globally. So we secure, as I mentioned, 19 of the world's 20 banks. Um, deliver those biometric solutions to government, public authorities and private entities. And we've got a mission to build a 5G world we can trust. Hmm. On to early careers. So my area of specialism, I hope you can answer any questions you've got on this. Uh, but we've got lots of opportunities in early careers at TALIS. It's an area that we're extremely passionate about and we're looking to grow significantly over the next five years. Um, so I'll tell you a bit about our opportunities now, how you can apply. Um, and details of our assessment process. Uh, we believe as a business that we shouldn't have any surprises. So we're very, very open with this because we want to set people up to succeed. When you're going through that interview process, we want you to be able to be your best. So go into lots of detail on that. Um, and a reminder, our roles do go live next week on the 30th of October. So if you are looking for a new graduate opportunity, please do check our website. So we've got a diverse array of programmes at TALIS. We are uh, fundamentally an engineering uh, technology and manufacturing business. So the main area we recruit our graduates within is engineering. Um, we have 
a number of business graduate roles as well from procurement, contract management, bid and program management and business growth. What this ultimately means um, and what these areas cover are each area of our cycle at Talis to acquire new business. So we work with um, business growth, so marketing and sales to go out there, hunt for new business, work with local governments, work with um, UK businesses and international countries to advertise and sell our products. We then work very closely with our bid and program management team who go out and write really competitive bids for these new um, pieces of business we're looking to win. Um, we have to take into account a number of different things within that, like the um, obviously the excellence of our products, costs, but also social impact. So social impact is um, something that Talis is very, very focused on. It's, it's corporate social responsibility, and we're very conscious of making um, everything we do greener, safer, more secure, but also looking to socially impact people from underrepresented groups. And this is something that we write into our bids. We have a commitment to do this and we ensure that we recruit diversity. Um, this is where we play a part in that process. Once we win our bids, uh, we get into the contract management phase and we write up our contracts, ensure that they're very secure um, and that they are um, legally binding. We work with the procurement team to negotiate costs with customers when we're trying to come up with the best solution and the win-win for both parties. And the final and very much integral end of this whole solution is engineering. So as an engineer at Talis, you will work on our systems, our software, and our hardware to design and create these innovative, excellent solutions for customers. So we cover every aspect of Talis and that whole process within this graduate, pro uh, graduate program, which is a very much a talent development program. So a bit more detail, um, our engineering graduate opportunities, as I mentioned, cover software engineering, mechanical and systems engineering. If you have any questions on the details of that, I'm sure our graduates would give you um, a bit more insight into their day to day and what they do. But um, fundamentally, we build systems. We have lots of different um, in systems, there's lots of problem solving to come up with solutions to what customers need. Our software engineers help develop the software that goes with these new systems that we develop and our mechanical engineers work on developing the hardware that form part of this solution. So each area is extremely integral. Um, engineering is also a three year rotational program. It's to give you lots and lots of variety um, and richness of experience uh, within that three year period. So it is rotational. We start off with a one year placement across one of our sites, which um, is we ask for preferences on. So we've got lots of different locations. Um, but we do take that into account when we're doing those first time placements. Um, people don't always get their first choice, but you will definitely get it at some point within our scheme. Um, and we ask you to relocate across these different places in, in the country and work with our different businesses because you get a real insight into the different things that Talis do. So at the end of the programme, we want people to have a really broad understanding of these different areas. Um, that's why it's so focused on talent development. You don't just get one experience with one area of our business. You get to see a bit and touch everything, work with lots of different people and customers and, and get involved with different tech. So it's very, very broad. Uh, we also have that's your year one, two and three. And in year three, there'll be a placement of your choice again. And we have training with a very established um, university, Cranfield University, where there's focus on general management and other skills that you'll need to be successful as an engineer. Our starting salary for graduates as well is 29,000 per annum. And this is currently under review at the moment. So we will be increasing the salary um, and that will be revealed in due course. We offer a really competitive holiday. So 201 hours a year, which roughly equates to 27 days. Um, and we do have uh, additional days off um, around bank holidays on top. We also have a flexible working week and work half day Fridays, which to be honest is part of the reason I'm still here. I love that flexibility and it's nice to have Friday afternoons off. Um, and as I mentioned earlier, social impact, corporate social responsibility is a big, big area of focus and very important to us as a business. So we do give all of our graduates um, 10 volunteering days a year. So you can use this um, for any cause of your choice, whether that's something close to your heart, if it's a local cause that you want to get involved with, if it's going out and working with schools and different people in STEM, if you're into engineering. Um, it's something that we really invest in and our people the opportunity to do alongside your work. 
our business pro pro project program. So I touched on the areas of the cycle and how it all works um, and how each area is extremely important to get the job done for our customers. And we've got a variety of programs there, as I mentioned earlier. The business graduate program is shorter, so it's a two year program. Um, and again, there are rotational placements and they are slightly more frequent. They'll range between six months to a year. Um, the starting salary for our business graduates is currently 27,000 per annum uh, per year. And again, this is under review with the same benefits as the engineering program. Our application process. Um, so this is, as I say, my area of specialism. Um, I work very closely with the team to run our assessment and selection process. And here is how you can apply um, and uh, go through our process if you're interested. So on the 30th of October, all of our roles will go live. So you can head over to our careers site um, and complete an online application. Um, it is Talis Careers. So if you search that in Google, you will find us very, very easily. And all of our graduate positions will be available on that date. We have a new, very exciting online assessment as part of our pre-screening process. Um, we get thousands of applicants a year. So we have to whittle that down to um, obviously top talent and try and give people as many opportunities and, and um, bring the best people through our process. So the first stage is an online assessment, which is um, made up of a number of different areas um, from situational judgment tests to assess how you respond to situations in our workplace. There are questions where we give you scenarios about how things could work at Talis and we, we try and get your insight into how you'd respond to those situations. Um, we have verbal numerical uh, reasoning tests and computational reasoning, which is logic for, uh, for engineering graduates, gives us an idea of how you interpret data, um, which is going to be quite an important part of any engineering role and different business roles at Talis. And then there is a virtual interview with three questions um, that we ask you just to get a bit of an insight into how you'd respond to certain situations. We find out a bit about you and your approach. Um, this is not scored by AI, but you'll be happy to know it's, it's um, done by our TALIS team. Um, it's very much a human process. And the reason we have such a broad assessment is because we understand that some people excel in one area, which could be video interviewing. Others may excel in verbal numerical reasoning. So we look at the whole piece when we're trying to bring people through that pre-screening process. Um, and we also make adjustments throughout. So another thing that's very close to my heart, but also important to the business is ensuring that we are inclusive as possible. Um, we, there are a lot of neurotypical people in the world, but there are also 20% of the UK population is neurodiverse. So throughout our entire assessment process, we offer adjustments to people. Um, if that is something that will help with that upfront assessment, if it's something that will help further down the process to enable you to be your best, we ask people to come forward with this. We offer a number of different um, options that we can do to help you succeed. So something to bear in mind if you do apply. Uh, once the online assessment is complete, as I mentioned, our team review thoroughly um, the, the scores overall for this online assessment. And then for successful applicants, you'd be invited through to one of our virtual assessment centres, uh, which run between February and May. We did used to do these in person across the country. They were very hectic, they were very fun, and we met some amazing talent. But um, during COVID, we decided to switch to completely virtual process. Um, it's worked really well. We've got fantastic feedback on it, um, but it's also meant we could be more inclusive. Some individuals don't have cars, struggle to get to sites. So it's something that's opened up that door for us and made we can, um, meant that we can bring people forward from lower socioeconomic backgrounds. And it's also a lot greener. The amount of paper we used to go through um, doing these assessment centres, uh, we'd cry at. So um, yeah, it's made a real difference us doing this. And typically we'll have about 10 individuals on an assessment centre. Um, I'll go into the details of what one looks like in a minute. But once you've gone through that process between anywhere between February and May, when you do an assessment with us, we would then make successful candidates an offer. Um, and we begin the exciting onboarding process with Talis, where we share a site with you with lots and lots of information about us, buddies um, that work with the business that can answer any questions you have. So you can begin to start to feel a part of us before you join. And then we have a week long on site induction, the first week of September, um, where we get absolutely everybody together and we learn a lot about the business. We have lots and lots of fun activities. Um, this year we had a big games, um, big sort of inflatable game section outside at a hotel where we had um, things like whack-a-mole and trampolining and 
Um, we had lots of indoor old school arcade games and dance mats and things, followed by a dinner. Um, so it was a really good chance for everyone to get to know each other, learn about Talis before we then start, you know, onto the programs and, and you get into your roles. Uh, so from there, a bit more information about us, as I say, we don't want to hide anything when people apply, we want to give you every opportunity to be your best. So a few hints and tips that I would mention if you do apply for us, or to be honest, any interview you're going for, it's good to bear this in mind. Um, interviews can be super daunting. I started at Talis now about six years ago, so luckily I haven't had to do one for quite a long time, but I know we can all, we can all get a bit stressed, we can feel under pressure when we're going through to an interview, so it's quite useful to remember this technique when you're answering questions um, star um, so if you think of envision that in your head um, when you're asked a question and you're trying to think of an answer and you're trying to work through this in a way that the person interviewing you is going to really understand and um, not get lost within it's really useful to talk about the scenario you were in when answering this question so if somebody says you know tell me about your biggest achievement you want to talk to them about that situation. First of all, what was the situation you were in? What were the stakes? Introduce that, give as much detail as you can. Um, with that biggest achievement, what was the task that you had to do to, um, to achieve that? How did you go about doing that? Um, give them lots of details about how difficult that task was, why it was challenging. What was the action that you took? So when you were solving it, you thought through the process of this task, the problems and how um, difficult it is. What were the actions that you took to to resolve the problem or the issue or um, develop something and then the thing that people sometimes forget which is the most important bit what was the result so it's fantastic you did this you had an amazing achievement um, you worked through and you told us all about this brilliant thing what happened at the end of it just a bit of a tip it always helps me whenever i'm answering questions to think about that um, research a company. Everybody, when you come to an assessment centre, wants to know really why you're looking to join a business. What gets you excited about that company? Why them? Um, it's very much a two-way process. You're interviewing, uh, we're interviewing you, but you're interviewing us too. So if you have questions about Talis once you've done research or any other business, it's really good to show that you've done that research and um, interview us a little bit. It will give you more of a chance to do that if you know a bit about the company. And be yourself too it's really important to do that from the beginning um it's always it makes people feel more at ease when you can bring yourself to an interview situation so from there as i mentioned our assessment centers are completely virtual they run over a half day with lots and lots of breaks because we can all get a bit camera fatigue they're made up of two group exercises where we split people off into different groups give them a problem problem to solve and see how people work together to do that um, we have a one-to-one -one behavioral competency based interview and then our graduates for engineering and business will have a technical interview so really hone in on what you've got from your degrees how you could apply that to our positions so it's quite a well-rounded experience and from there we make an offer uh, a little bit about our behaviors these are really important to us um, and it, we we try and live by these in everything that we do so we want people to come in with brilliant ideas to think big to be ambitious imagine the future of technology um, make things happen deliver solutions with other people work together be accountable for your ideas um, and that together one is is huge so grow others in yourself think about how you can develop yourself throughout this process what opportunities can you um, can you take on to grow yourself in any role that you do um, and that's something that we interview you about so you'll see this back afterwards but if you do come for an interview with us just think about these areas because it's really what we look for in our people so i'm not going to go into questions now um, I'm actually going to hand over to two of our fantastic graduates that are joining us today and they're going to share a bit about their experience with you for the next sort of 10 minutes and then we can move into a Q&A at the end. So if I hand over first of all to Aaron, I'm going to turn my camera off and um, please introduce yourself. Hello everyone, thanks for coming. Uh, yeah, my name's Aaron and I am on my second year of the Engineering Graduate Scheme. I joined in September of last year and just wanted to quickly share some bits and pieces of what i picked up and what i've experienced so far and how i got here and where i plan to go in the future um so let's just try and find the slides real quick uh, i think they're right probably right at the end 
I'm still sharing, Aaron, so I can move. To oh, you still share? Okay, well, I've got them yeah. open. Okay. So if you just go to the first one, um, so started off doing um, going down the route of learning motorsport engineering. It was my original plan going through college and and uni to chase that career path, and I made it through. I graduated in 2020 um, and kept on working in that industry. But after a after a while, I decided I wanted a new challenge. Um, it didn't quite get the fire started like it used to. So I decided I want to um, do something completely new. And I found out about uh, the Talas graduate scheme uh, in uh, in a similar way to one of these shows. Um, so I applied for it and went through the uh, all the onboarding process. Um, did the uh, as uh, as George described? Did the uh, the phone interview? Did the virtual day? Um, did some good group team building exercises as a part of that. Did te technical interviews as well because I'm part of the en uh, engineering graduate scheme. And it was all everyone was very friendly. It was all very well run. It was everyone was very accommodating. Um, you get plenty of notice um, when it's going to happen. Like when I did mine, I was working full time, very busy before I started. Um, and they were very accommodating and, and helpful with uh, making time for that. And it was overall a really, really uh, good experience. Uh, it definitely didn't feel like a stressful interview onboarding. Like Georgia says, you're finding out what Talas is about as well as Talas are finding out what you're good at and, and what you're about. So it's a, it's a, it's a good give and take transaction. Um, so I started in uh, September of last year I'm currently a systems engineer, which is mostly involves looking at systems as a whole. Uh, for engineering students on here will know about sort of uh, doing bids and, and developing a product and testing it, making sure you've built the right thing, making sure you've built what the customer wants, uh, and then qualifying what you've built, qualifying the solution, and then uh, uh, post-production management, upgrading the system, uh, supporting customers. So that's what systems engineers mostly focus on, but you also get a lot of exposure to other disciplines on systems. You do a bit of hardware, you always do a bit of software as well. Uh, and it, it's quite a good foundation for for, for learning engineering. Um, it's allowed me to develop a lot of uh, core engineering skills, a good engineering mindset. You're surrounded by some incredibly smart people at Dallas and they're all very, very supportive and happy to share their knowledge with you and help you out. Um, and it's a really, really good network to, to learn new things. And, but it's also allowed me to develop personal skills. Um, I've never really been a massive, uh, huge talker. I always got a bit nervous talking to new people and stuff, but uh, being at Talas and how friendly everyone has been has made things a lot easier, definitely a lot more open. Um, I, be, I get told a lot on the grad scheme that there's no such thing as a stupid question. A question is, just as valid as any other, even if you think in your head, oh, they probably just, this probably isn't a very good question or, or, or it might be a silly question. It never is. Uh, everyone is always very willing to, to help you out. And going forwards, so I've got uh, another year, uh, around about two years to go now. So I've got the placement I'm currently on and then one more placement after that. And what I'm going to try and do is continue to develop on the foundations that I've built so far learn new things, meet new people, uh, try and figure out what route where I want to end up, like what site do I want to be working out, what uh, project do I want to be doing. And yeah, the other thing is like working at different sites. I've worked at two Talas sites now. I worked at Temple Keen for my first year. I'm working in Crawley this year, and then hopefully I'm going to go to a different site uh, for my third year. So I get to experience all the different areas different sites different people and it's also quite a fun quite a fun adventure from a personal standpoint moving all over the country and getting to see new places and experience uh experience different things and yeah and and Talas also offer the Cranfield qualification which is really good it's a really really helpful qualification to push towards chartership uh chartership is something that if you decide you want to become chartered Talas do massively support it uh they help you out a lot with doing quarterly reports, getting you signed up with mentors who can help you uh, push towards getting that chartership qualification. Uh, 
So that's another thing that's really, really, really good for from a personal standpoint. And and tellers do really want to help you out with that as much as they can. And then just make the most of of the opportunities tellers provides, like George mentioned with volunteering. They they really encourage people to do that, and also the building a network and developing skills. So it's been a really great experience so far. Got to turn my mic on. Hello. Um, I'm just chipping in here because there's been some questions specifically for you. And I think it probably makes sense for okay. me to ask you while we're kind of talking. Um, so uh, there's a kind of a three part question from Jack. He says, hi, Aaron. Why did you choose Talis? What makes you stay? And what's the best part of the scheme? OK, so. I chose Talis. I personally knew someone who worked at Talis, um, as a family friend. And whilst I was going through my stage of deciding to go down a different engineering, engineering career path, I did look at a lot of other um, schemes out there. But I found that the Talis one was the most competitive for development. Um, you know, the biggest thing for me, I think, was the Crownfield qualification and the further education that the Talis will provide as part of the scheme. Um, which then allows you to push towards, um, yeah, chartership, push towards uh, really making a name for yourself and getting all the, all the letters at the bottom of your email that, that show people that you really, really are capable. Um, and what makes me stay is I really, really enjoy the work. Uh, I started off, like I say, I used to do motorsport, which is massively different to what I did in my first project. Um, and I didn't really think I'd enjoy it, but the more I got into it, the more and more I found myself thriving in that environment and <clears throat> that the people I was working with uh, made it a lot easier as well. So it's been a really positive experience so far, really enjoyable work. Wonderful. Thank you. Um, and yeah. Yeah, the best part of the scheme, what, I'm sure that uh, it sounds like there's a few, actually. Yeah, I mean, it's, 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 hard, to, it's hard to narrow it down. Um, I think I'd say I definitely think the best part of a scheme is 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 just being able to make an impact on the projects that you're on and even even though you are in a graduate position your your opinion is still respected your word is still taken people you know you as you progress in in your placements you will have senior engineers coming to you for your opinion coming to you for your help you are definitely treated as an equal um on the graduate scheme you're not just a a, a trainee who sits in the corner making notes you're you're, you're actively involved in in the projects that you work on. Well, wow. okay, that's really helpful. Thank you. Really comprehensive and actually really inspiring answers. I do have a one more question for you from um, Julia, and we're not sure how much you can say about the projects that you do work on, but Julia says, can you say what products you work on and, and what you've developed on the grad scheme? So, so far, yeah, I can't give away all the details but so in my first year i was working on uh i'm trying to think how that works it was a uh mine countermeasure project it was quite a, a high profile project it was cutting edge technology really 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 interesting um and i was doing that from january to from uh, september to september of last year and then currently i'm working on the flight simulator that you may have seen in the slide pack uh, for the avionics. I've been on this project now for seven, eight weeks. And it's it's always a steep learning curve starting a new project. But the from a system standpoint, the system still works the same way. It's um, so you definitely <clears throat> you bring new things onto these projects. Um, stuff does transfer tra knowledge does transfer over between between each project for sure. Um, and I don't know what I'll do next year. Something more exciting, I guess. <laughs> I don't think that uh, any year is going to be the same at all, is it? <laughs> mm -hmm. No, definitely not. <laughs> Wonderful. Well, thank you very much, Aaron. Um, I'll disappear now um, and let the presentation continue. And I'll pop up again for the next Q&A. Oh, thank you very much. Um, I think that's pretty much everything that I had. So I will pass on to the other graduates joined us if he's ready yes it's george, george? yeah lovely hi george Wonderful. hello it's a pleasure to be here and uh yeah just uh um it's gonna be a tough act to follow on that last presentation it's excellent uh but 
anyway, so my name is George, and I started out um, uh, with my GCSEs and A-levels and doing a degree in history at the University of Nottingham. And at the time, I kind of was, I'd kind of ruled out engineering or working for an engineering company from my head because, um, well, I wasn't any good at maths. I hadn't taken the right courses. And I just generally felt that I should play into my strengths, which was reading and writing. And so um, I did my degree in history. And you know, this is despite me having a lot, a lot of interest in aerospace and engineering. It was, uh, uh, I still decided that that wasn't something which I was ever going to be able to do. Um, so while at university, I um, uh, had a couple of jobs working in retail, mostly uh, doing some odd summer jobs, uh, working in a football stadium for a bit, and Greg's, just all the kind of typical uh, uh, student jobs. Um, and then I applied to the Tallers graduate scheme because I saw they had a position in legal and contracts, which was actually a position which I felt, you know, even if it was a long shot, um, that I could play into it with my strength, with my skill set. Um, so then I graduated from university in 2023, uh, got my degree in history. And by August, I I'd taken the test back in May, but due to technicalities, um, I didn't get my results until August um, and I was accepted. And for me, that was just incredible. I mean, I'd ruled out going into engineering. We're going to work for an engineering and aerospace company. And I got the offer nonetheless. And that was, you know, it's truly one of those things which um, kind of uh, kind of sticks with you, if you know what I mean. So thus far, I've only been here for two months, so there's not as much that I can say as Aaron, but um, you have to, you go through an on, your onboarding process, you'll go through your induction week, and it's all a lot of, it's all a lot of fun. You get to know a huge number of people, and they're all very friendly from, not just from within the company, uh, but the new graduates as well. You start building connections, and uh, hopefully some uh, long-lasting friendships as well as more uh, as well as more formal um, uh, relationships so I started in September um, and yeah as I said coming up to work in two months here and honestly during, during those two months it's not just you know learning things um, on the platform although you will be learn learning things you will be a uh, uh, going through various uh, training sessions, but mostly you are just, as Aaron said, kind of put into uh, these big projects. Um, but you shouldn't worry about it because you're not going to be left alone in the projects. You will have you will have people who will uh, help you out and who will help you understand what needs what needs to be done. But there is also kind of a, a mutual. Uh, understanding that um, you you will kind of have a degree, you will have a degree of independence is the point. Um, and so I've been, I've been working through various uh, contracts in the legal and contracts department and uh, re reading over them, you know, fi do, filing memos, um, yeah, pub, uh, doing various um, uh, uh, non-disclosure agreements, uh, all the sort of normal stuff that you get in legal and contracts. And yeah, I think it's important to also say that working for a company like Tallers um, just grants you insight into a lot of the uh, processes which keep these keep these big companies running. You know, um, and that is tremendously helpful for not just working for Tallers, but for working for Working for any uh, company um, within the engineer within the engineering sector, um, and so that's uh, yeah, true. It's something which uh, 
comes as a useful uh, skill set in life. So for the future, uh, I, I aim to continue to develop my legal and contracts skills and tackle more complex tasks. They will start off not easy, but they will just kind of warm you into the whole into the whole uh, process. Um, and as you as you continue to develop your skills, you will get to complex uh, tackle more challenging tasks as you go throughout um, as you go throughout it. Um, yeah, I am. Um, yeah, aim to gain insight into the different operations of Talers working th working at multiple different sites. So yes, the graduate scheme uh, is a rotational program, um, six month slots over the course of two years. And you know, while while this might sound daunting to some, it's uh, honestly uh, been no hassle um, for me getting to getting to and from work. Um, down uh currently down Crawley and that's uh uh yeah it's been no hassle trying to uh relocate and do all that stuff so um I wouldn't be worried about it necessarily and there's lots of support that goes into that sort of thing um aim to expand my personal network as I said before you're making connections with people as you go throughout um as you go throughout the process and you're always you're always going to be building connections and it's not just within your department it will be across departments because you'll have to interact with many different people um, in order to gain an understanding of what it is you need to work on so yeah i aim to gain knowledge and understand my fields outside of lnc that kind of comes naturally with it um but it just goes to show that even when you join even when you join the company in a specific role you're not necessarily boxed in you know you can branch out and you can um talk to talk to numerous people and uh get, gain just further knowledge and insight about certain things and so i mean that's just a true the whole thing is a tremendous opportunity um so yeah and i think that's all uh have to say about that and that was a really interesting story i loved your roots to tell us i love your passion um i think it's wonderful thank you for sharing your experience um georgia i've got um quite a few questions uh, for you now are you ready for me to kind of take it away with you yeah of course wonderful okay there's a couple of recap questions i know that you spoke about this at the beginning of the session but there have been a, a couple of that have come through um just to clarify can you let us know again do grads get to pick um whether they go into defense space etc or is that allocated to the grads really good question so very slightly um, with the business graduates, we have um, less business graduate roles a year. Uh, so we have quite set placements. So people do get a choice if there's a couple of options, but you're generally told um, where you would start. But we do try and take it, things into account like lo location. If people have a set preference, we do take it into account. It's not guaranteed. Um, engineering is slightly different. There are more roles. So within um, engineering, we tend to give people a couple of options. The, you know, the, um, the head of engineering for early careers looks at people's location and takes this into account. Um, so there will be some people that get the first preference, others may have to relocate further afield, but it tends to develop as you're on scheme. So for instance, once you've joined, if you relocate from say London and you, have, you go to our Belfast site for year one, you may love it, you may want to stay, um, or you may think, actually, this is really other interesting domain I want to work with. And you'll work with your manager, that head of engineering, to s express those preferences, and they do try and get you a top choice. So you, mm -hmm. you may start somewhere that you're not looking to, um, you know, ideally, but you will get that, that broad choice as you go through the scheme. And you can at sometimes stay in certain placements if it's going really well. Other times you might really want to move somewhere and get that different experience. So it's a bit of a middle ground yeah okay and and with the relocation how does that work then 
Yeah, good question. We provide a relocation allowance, so up to a certain amount, which we share with all the graduates um, when they join. So you can use things for things like, you know, if you need to hire removal vans, flights, um, just uprooting your life, really. And we give a certain amount for this. And we give advice. We, we connect you with current graduates that have done it so they can share hints and tips. So that's the, the process. But yes, we are. We do financially support our graduates to relocate. Right, brilliant. And just another question around like the um, experience of um, the scheme. There was a question which asked, do you get to move around different departments when you're on scheme to experience every part of the business? It sounds like it's going to be different depending on each programme. Um, but yeah, can you just um, just get tell us a bit more about that? Yeah, exactly. So it's yeah, not just the locations that you'll move to. It's generally a different business area. So if you did break, relocate, um, you know, um, George and Aaron, work, you both work in Crawley at the moment. But I think, Aaron, you said you started somewhere. You started in Temple Coombe and that would have been a completely different business to um, what we were doing in Crawley. So I think Aaron's moved into avionics now, but you were working in the defence side before. So, um, yeah, it's a two way conversation at times. It might be I really want to move to this domain. If there are opportunities, then um, the head of engineering will try and make that happen as much as possible. He speaks to all of our different businesses and placement managers to try and find placements. Um, but obviously, there's a limit to how many placements we've got. Typically, everybody generally wants to work in space because it's super cool and everyone wants to kind of be Tim Peake at one point. Um, we have a limited number of slots, but the space business is growing, so that will happen more in future. But we, we do have to put people everywhere. So graduate set roles in um, defence, in aerospace, in secure communications, in digital security and in space. We've got people everywhere. It's an interesting segue because my next question was about specific space. So um, Matt asked, how big is the space industry, industry in the UK? Do you see it getting bigger in the, couple, couple, uh, the next couple of years? And how well, how will, I can't put my teeth in today. How will TELUS play a part in it? Um, Matt said he's noticed that there's growing investment in spaceports here. Yeah, great observation. Um, it's a huge area of business for us. So we've got about eight and a half thousand employees in space at the moment. And the revenue for the space business is in the region of sort of 2.15 billion. Industry wise, it's set to grow um, from now to 2030 from 270 billion globally to 500, just under 500 billion. And there's going to be huge opportunities for um, TALIS within that. As I mentioned, we're prime contractors on a number of different initiatives with the Exo Mars rover prime contractor. And we are to continue to grow that business and get bigger. We're moving sites so we can bring more people on, on board too. So, yeah, it's definitely an area of expansion for us. In the coming Brilliant. Years. Thank you. Um, right then, Tanya said, um, hi, as a software engineering grad, how does AI currently play a part in the business? And are there opportunities for grads to work with AI and machine learning? Um, so I, I'll part answer this and then I may hand over to um, Aaron or George if they want to fill in any gaps. But we have a dedicated part of the business um, that is solely dedicated to research and technology. Um, it's called, yeah, RTI for short. And we're within that, very much focusing on the technology of AI and machine learning. We've been in that sector for some time and it's a very, very specialist sector. So we typically hire people that have PhDs um, and have come out of that, that sort of program, PhD level um, experience within the AI and machine learning sector. So they are looking at research for new technology in that space that will adapt, adopt globally. Um, I don't actually know within the software engineering program if there is um, there is exposure to AI, but I wonder if Aaron, if you have anything to add on that point. I think I think you can get involved with it. I think some of the placements do use it. Um, from a software standpoint, I think that is I would argue the most practiced engineering discipline at Talos. It's it really drives the business. There is tons and tons and tons of software opportunities and and I, I think AI machine learning is going to be something that will be become a lot more involved um, in the future like Georgia was saying it's quite a specialist department at the moment but it is definitely something that a lot of projects are picking up on um, a lot of projects are very software driven uh, at Talos and so I think it's a probably a, a good opportunity uh, on the software graduate scheme Wonderful. Thank you, Aaron. Um, there was a question from Ali, which says, I'm currently living and studying in Italy and wanted to ask if you accept international applications. Mm -hmm. Good question. 
for the graduate um, program, we do a prerequisite of um, our hiring people is the permanent right to work in the UK um, and the ability to secure security pro uh, security clearance. So uh, given sort of the nature of what we do, as I mentioned, we work in the defence space, we work with a lot of governments, that is a prerequisite. So if someone is you know, international, if they, uh, they're not a UK national, they're say European national, but they reside in the UK or have the permanent right to, to work in the UK, can secure clearance. It's a, it's a bit of a lengthier process. If you've lived outside the country in the last five years, you have to go back to any country you've, um, you worked to live within and get a police check done. So it can happen. Um, we have got interna uh, international individuals working on the graduate scheme, but the number one prerequisite, as I say, is having the permanent right to work in the UK currently or um, a long term visa and definite leave to remain and the ability to secure that clearance. So all our offers are subject to that. Wonderful. Thank you. Um, James has asked, um, well, James would actually like to apply for 2025. So he's asked when the application window opens. I know for this year it's literally the next week or so yeah. is that mirrored year to year pretty much so we shift the dates slightly year on year just depending on our timeline we're going live with our new assessment process i mentioned earlier the pre-screening um this month so we're moving to the 30th of october last year i think we opened on the 1st of october so james if you check the website at that time you can see the roles it's usually october time um, but we have launched a new platform that's on our website at the moment and um, you'll be able to find a sort of register your interest link in. So it's really useful for people that might be looking next year. You can sign up to it with your um, personal email address and you get lots of information about the business. And you'll also be alerted to when our roles go live. So you can sign up to that platform. I think it's called Talis Connector. But if you search Talis Early Careers page, you'll be able to yeah. find it on there and sign up. Right. OK, then. Wonderful. Talis Early Careers page go find it um right then so UK sorry not Talis because oh sorry to the French page no no it's me I said Talis um oh. Talis UK early careers yeah wonderful um right then oh there's just been a um oh yeah do we have a link um well we don't have a link right now um but what we'll do is when we send the recording of this it'll land in your inbox and we can put links in that so just um yeah we can send it via email uh, I'm just thinking I could quickly put something in the chat, but I, I don't know whether um, I'll have time, but just bear with, we'll get through these other questions and hopefully at the end I can try and do a quick search and ping something in the chat for you, Matt. Um, right then, Helen asked a really good question. She says, um, do you offer work experience or taste today so that grads can get a feel for the business before committing to applying? We do. We have. We run two formal work experiences a year, so they're advertised again on our website. If you search Talis UK Work Experience, you'll see when they've come up. I think we've had the two cycles, and I think the next one is planned for March or April. Um, not 100% sure because I don't. Our team don't actually run that. Our social impact team do. But yes, if you check the website Talis UK Work Experience, it will be advertised when we have when we do have our openings. Wonderful. I'm actually just going to pop a link into the chat now, which is for Talis UK Early Careers. George, is that, that's the one, isn't it? Yeah. Right. OK, wonderful. Um, and then it love... will take you through to um, graduate engineering opportunities or business graduate programme. And that's where you can get onto the link. If anyone this year wants to apply, that's the easiest route. OK, great. Um, we've just got one more question for you and then I will just in the last few minutes um, pose a question to um, George and Aaron. Um, for you, though, and I don't know whether you can share this, it's kind of like trade secrets, but um, Simon says, please, can you share some of the problems grads have to solve at the assessment centres? At assessment centres? Yeah, to an, yeah, I suppose to an extent. So we give you... so. Um, mentioned the different parts of the process so the competency-based interview that you do is a one-to-one -one interview with um, a manager in HR or in, you know one of the technical managers and we'll ask you questions about um, your experience in relationship to those leadership competencies that I told you about so um, if you think of the three areas think big make it happen together we'll ask you questions that relate to those areas so the think big might be examples of where you've um, thought about how to solve the problem differently. That's where we'd, we'd ask you to share you know, your answer with that star technique I mentioned. The make it happen is um, usually questions around something that you've designed or developed or something that you've created or, or done differently and how you made that happen. 
and together questions are normally about how you work with others so those are the kind of main skills that we look for there are an array of questions but they relate to those areas specifically we also send out the questions in advance so we're a bit we don't leave much to the imagination um, <laughs> so yes before your interview if you're if you're invited in we'll send you um this year your competency-based interview questions and we're also going to send you the technical interview questions um, because we don't want any surprises. We want people to over-prepare <laughs> as well, much as possible. Well, it's thing, isn't yeah. it? Because there's there's a lot of organisations who will, you know, will say, you know, we don't want to catch people out. We, you know, want people to perform at their best. And I think that, you know, there's there's a lot to be said for, for actually practicing that and sharing the information so people can yeah. thrive and they can feel prepared and they can present their best work. So I think that's brilliant. Um, that's that's kind of a roundup of the kind of onboarding and recruitment questions. I did just want to pose in the last five minutes a question um, to both Aaron and George, um, and they they will be what if you went through the process again, whether it be through the application, onboarding, or on program, what would you do differently, and what advice would you give to anybody who's kind of considering to do this? easy on who goes first so I appreciate I've just kind of landed that on to you um but yeah generally speaking if you were speaking to anybody who was having a real think about whether this was for them um kind of what advice would you give um and what would you change from you know what, what would you maybe do better or differently compared to what you you did do if anything George do you want to go first yeah I'll, I'll go first um me personally, what would I change? I think um, I would probably, uh, you know, be a bit more relaxed throughout the whole thing. You know, as uh, Georgia was saying, um, they're not there. To, the the recruiters aren't there to, you know, eat your head off and chew you out on everything. You know, they're there to get the very best out of you. So. I think it's remembering really, that, isn't it? And having kind of some trust in that. Yeah, there's really, there's nothing to worry about, you know. And uh, yeah, it's, it's a competitive position. There are a lot of, uh, there are a lot of uh, other candidates who are going for these roles, but you should really, you really just have to kind of, um, you know, be yourself because you can, you can, they can kind of they can tell when you're putting something on mm. when you're putting on a persona that isn't you because it doesn't flow naturally so really just to relax what be yourself is, at George, these we're, all psych we're kind of psychic as well is that what you're saying recruiters are semi-psychic <laughs> <laughs> to add to our extra skills sorry back to you <laughs> yeah um so yeah i think that's just that's my biggest point is just uh to be to be more relaxed yeah and i think that's one of the problems which i had going into the to the process was um you know i would just get really uh tense and nervous um but there really is nothing to worry about so thank you that's really helpful and hopefully reassuring for you know the audience out here who are thinking about you know embarking on this journey um aaron what about you um, hundred percent. Second, what George said, the through the interview and onboarding process, really just be yourself, yeah. be calm, and then confidence will come with it. Um, yeah, really just try and because tell them they're hard, they're looking, they're evaluating you for for who you are. Um, and so I think it's really important to be yourself. And one of the things that I would definitely do differently is after your onboarding process, you um, you get the opportunity to get in touch with other future candidates and people you'd also be starting with uh, through forums. Um, and I personally, I didn't really reach out to anyone that I was going to be like my fellow future early careers members uh, mm -hmm. in my cohort. I never really reached out to anyone. I just kept on working. And so I showed up um, during my first placement and met with new people. And it turns out they'd already gotten to know each other. Uh, they'd already met up, you know, some of them had uh, were moving to the same location so they managed to find somewhere to live together and and things like that so they've got really other people who are actively involved with getting to know your other early careers members um so that's definitely something i would recommend 
that is like gold the, dust. Uh, yeah, especially yes, like you is. said, with the relocation to have like a group of people that maybe, you know, you can actually even look for a place, house shares, that kind of thing. It's helpful, isn't it? Yeah, the yeah, tellers will get you in contact with other graduates uh, who will be starting other just a, just a graduates as a whole, but also specifically graduates who will be starting on the same site as you. Um, yeah. And also within those forums are our buddies and people who who like me who've been on the scheme for a year or two or who worked at site and they're there to ask their answer questions and things like that. Because uh, when I relocated, I literally grabbed the first flat that I could find because um, I didn't really get in touch with with people who were already working there. And uh, uh, if I'd have known, yeah, then I may have had the option to 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 split living costs with another early careers member um, yeah or or just get more knowledgeable things like that so Wonderful. highly recommend getting involved with getting in touch with your future early career colleagues if you make it through the uh the onboarding brilliant and absolutely good luck to anybody that embarks on this like I've, I've said this session is being recorded it will be emailed to you i've shared the link um to where you can find further information but that will be included in your email as well um georgia can i just hand over to you for a, a quick roundup and any final words yeah thank you everybody for your time we really appreciate you coming on today we hope it's been very informative and you've got a good insight into what we do as a company bit about the, what the people are like and our you know our experiences and what we work on um and if anyone is going to apply i wish you the very best of luck and i i will be on the assessment centers i'm also the poster child for our pre-screening assessment so i'll be guiding you through that so good luck and i really hope to see some of you there um, i hope you'll be joining us next year Wonderful. Thank you. And thank you to you, the panel, for putting together such a great session. Everybody who's joined and, you know, there's still over 400 people you know, here now. So enjoy the rest of your day, everybody. National Graduate Week. We have sessions going on for the rest of today. So if you aren't signed up for any, you know, more, have a look at on the website and see if there's anything that take your interest and you want to take a pick from. Um, thank you to all involved and see you soon. Bye. Thank you. Bye. Thank you, everyone. Thank you.